you talk about it, you know, being out there and gone the minute it's done. But everything's changed uh, with video. I mean, this yeah. is being, being videotaped so that anyone that doesn't see it or wants to see it again, or your friends that can't be here, will be able to see this at Explore Music. Yeah. It's kind of a game changer that everything you do is somehow out there in the ether, waiting to be discovered at some point, or waiting to be used against you. Is that well, a Well, we talked about this earlier, yeah. right? We were talking, came by the hotel room, picked me up, and um, we we're talking about at concerts a lot of times, people are just holding up their phones and you see, you look out and you see you know thousands of phones and a lot of times I'll notice right in the front row people are looking at their phone they're not even looking at the performance <laughs> and uh, it was weird you know we I went to the Grammys and when Mick Jagger came out um, everyone was including all the celebrities and musicians that were all looking in their phones and I'm going fucking Mick Jagger is right there. <laughs> I mean, I felt like stopping the show and saying, guys, look at this. It is part of what's going on, and, and it kind of is weird for me. I wish sometimes, I understand someone wants to capture a moment, and it's really beautiful that we get to do that. But at the other, the other side of the coin is, from my side, okay, is um, I understand what you're getting out of it. You're getting to go to a show. You're getting to videotape some of it. You can send it to your friend back home that couldn't get tickets or hey mom, check this out, whatever it is, it's cool. But um, sometimes we don't necessarily um, fire on all cylinders being a rock band. I think that's why people like rock bands because it's not processed. So when we fuck up, <laughs> everybody sees it. And it makes you a little bit uncomfortable. Like you think, well maybe I shouldn't jump from that speaker to that speaker. Because I don't want to be on YouTube as, you know, dumbass of the week <laughs> that didn't make it. And it's true. I swear to God, I talk to other musicians. They're like, yeah, I, I sometimes, I'll f you flub a note, it happens. But because there's like 10 people in front of you with, a, with their iPhone, you're going, oh my God, they just saw me do that. And then you keep fucking up. <laughs> And it's this weird thing. So there's a good thing, and there's also that that part of it. But that's what we talked about. You said so one of your friends was saying it kind of freaks them out sometimes. Yeah, you guys know Alex Lifeson from Rush. He has a he has a club in Toronto called the Orbit Room, and every year on the anniversary, Alex goes and, and, and plays in his club. And years ago, it was really it's always really great as a fan. But for him, I got the sense that it was so much fun, and now that everyone's, you know, they're kind of missing the moment. They're documenting the moment, but you're not really feeling the moment as yeah. a fan. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're at this interesting place where we complain about technology. You know, I'm saying, you know, what's up with Facebook? And at the same time, I'm using Facebook. You know, people are complaining about technology, or it sounds like I'm complaining about technology, but I'm not. I'm just bringing a point out. And where are we going with this technology and what's happening. I mean, people tell me they listen to the radio show on their phone and they download pieces of uh, the uh, vi videos, the teasers we're putting out for 6 a.m. on their phone and they follow me on Twitter on their phone. It's everything's happening right here. So I'm really not complaining. I just don't know where we're going. It's kind of interesting. I hope we keep the human contact. That's it, too, because if you never see anyone and you just talk to them virtually, uh, it's going to be a total game changer. A, a friend Maybe of not mine for the was positive. telling me that, that she, had to, she was dating this guy, and they literally would just text all the time. That's all they did. Text, 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 no sex. And <laughs> yeah, at some point she had to break up with him because he'd be, I can't make dinner tonight, but you want to chat. And, it, and and I think there's something, I do that with my kids. I go, you know what, let's put our phones down and let's go out and do something. Because I come from a time when I, I saw this happen, you saw this happen, but a lot of people don't know any other way. You know, it's, that's, that's, um, that's etiquette, is to just text back and forth all the time and not have human contact. Hopefully we don't lose that, you know, in books and in art. Um, I, I worry about it. I, I worry about it that the human experience is getting lost, you know, but I'm using technology at the same time. So I'm trying to change the way people see things by saying things that might inspire them to do better with their life. That, that's the way I'm using technology. Things that you say include um, 
talking about the lies of the beautiful people. What, what, what really are the lies of the beautiful Who are the beautiful people and what are their lies? What bothers you about these so-called beautiful people? Well, I was, I was um, in my photography studio and I was really isolated for a couple months. And it wasn't, I mean, I would literally go there and spend like 12 hours and then go home and go to sleep. And take my kids to school, go back, do that, put them to bed, go back there. It was, it was, it was getting my assistant was starting to get, like worry about me because I was writing the book and all I was doing was doing these photo sessions and these, these people were coming through the doors of my studio at all hours of the night and they were all kinds of people <laughs> that you will see in the book. And I was so into it, so into them and then um, I stopped to get gas one day at this gas station, and there was a People magazine sitting there, and it it said the 100 most beautiful people, and it just pissed me off. I was like, "What? Like, who are you to say?" And then I and, and as I was writing my book, I just remember that I was so unpopular for being who I am now that is popular, and how that was a real problem for me. I really had a hard time being invited to the talk clubs and to hang out with the beautiful people when before I was mocked and made fun of and that was part of my struggle when I was when I was younger with fame so I just thought to myself well you know George Clooney is a pretty good looking guy but I don't know him so don't tell me he's beautiful and um, Farah who's I think is beautiful who I shot when she weighs 350 pounds, um, she saw her mom shoot herself in her head and her dad put her out to be a prostitute at 11. I know for sure she's beautiful. How come she's not on this list? You know? So. That's kind of where it started. And so then I started kind of judging, you know, uh, people for judging people, and then I started going, well, now I'm being judgmental. So you can see how this book got long. And it, and then I would like start, go, and then I would start like, you know, arguing with myself in my own book. <laughs> Which was interesting, because, you know, I, as a, a man, have been uh, married twice to um, what some would perceive as the beautiful people, and um, I have a very amazing girlfriend. She's one of the most fantastic people I've ever met, but I'm actually able to see inside, but some people have said to me, well, if you're saying this, how come you're doing that? And it's because I'm not saying that um, you're a good looking guy, so you're ugly. And I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that a beautiful person from the outside isn't beautiful. I'm just saying, let's not let society make that decision. Let, let's, let's all feel good about ourselves. Equally, no matter what God gives you, sometimes God gives you no legs. I've got to photograph the people who God gave them legs and then took them away. That to me was inspiring as a man who can ever find a reason to complain in my life. To this beautiful woman is like teaching soldiers when they come back from war that have lost limbs how to deal and cope with their life and how to be athletic on top of that. So this is the experience I was going through. Those were the experience I had as a kid. And then sort of it all bundled in with this photography and then able to say, hey, man, check it out. This is like where I'm coming from. I'm definitely not on a podium. I'm not looking down on anybody. Uh, in fact, I think I'm looking up at a lot of people and, and have a lot of respect for a lot of people. And I'm just trying to spread kind of a good message. The book comes with a soundtrack, obviously, the, the music. You talked about not touring. You're in a fortunate position because a lot of bands today, the only way they can make a living in the post-Napster world is to actually go out and tour and do yeah. shows. How do you feel about the music business in terms of, is there anything good that's come out of everything that happened with the stealing? Because let's face it, the only thing that went wrong with the music industry at a high level is that people could steal the fucking music, right? Is that not it? They could take it without paying for it. We don't take cars at the car lot without paying for them, without yeah, going to jail. Well, we have, but... Well, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you have. <laughs> we stole a few things. Um, 
It's a game changer, though, and you're fortunate to have been on the other side of it and, 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 and created a career that will sustain you without having to tour. So, so we're all able to sit here together and go, wow, we're watching something happen. You know, maybe your grandparents saw the, uh, a car for the first time. Some of us were around when cell phones happened for the first time. You know, we're seeing things happening in real time for the first time. And, you know, even all the way to the iPad, you know, that's, think about that. 30 years ago. Think about where are we going to be in 30 years from now. I, I don't know with, with music how to really do anything more than inspire young bands to write better songs. To um, maybe buy some hair products. <laughs> I'm really, I personally, I don't know about you, but I'm really sick of looking at bands that don't 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 scare me. They don't inspire me. They don't dress in any way that's interesting. They don't have anything to say. And they're boring. And I think it's sad. I think it's sad that that's okay. I think it's just become redundant and ridiculous. There are some good bands out there. There are a couple great bands out there. But I'm not seeing any new Metallicas. I'm not seeing any new Guns N' Roses. I'm not seeing any new Rolling Stones. I don't. Where's the new Steven Tyler? I'd love to meet him. I'd love to work with him. I'd love to see a band become the biggest band in the world again. And it just is, to me, it's, I go to these festivals and the guys walk past me. And I know it's not all about looks, okay? I get that. But a guy walks past me and shakes my hand. I'm waiting for the band to go on stage. And then the guy walks on stage. And I thought it was the roadie. <laughs> it, it's tough to it's remember. Just, I just, you just have to remember that, you know, that's, I came from the 70s, and the 70s were about, people had style, they had flair. I mean, look at even some of those movies, like the whole, like the whole pimp thing, you know, and the girls had flair and fashion, and fashion and music were together. They were in bed together. And, and that, to me, is like, you know, we keep regurgitating bands that do this, but the songs were there too, so I'm, I'm like so passionate about trying to find a band that has that kind of passion, that wants to write those songs, they want to put on that show, and it's natural. It's natural, you know, it's not like, oh, okay, well, the new thing is this, and that's what we're going to do. I know there's some garage bands out there right now that are, got a poster of the New York Dolls up, and, you know, one of Metallica at the same time, and they're going to come out screaming. And we're going to be so happy. And then, you know, what happens from there, we'll see. The other side of the coin, a lot of uh, the devil's advocate would say, yes, style's important. And, and a lot of bands were forgettable because they were forgettable. But bands that you were inspired by um, visually yeah. led to you and led to a lot of bands in the 80s. But the other side of the coin would be that there was a lot of bands that it was style over substance, not uh, style agreed. with substance. Agreed. And, and that and that happens, um, you know. It happens. It happened in the fifties. Happened in the sixties. You know, the, the Rolling Stones were even guilty of cutting their hair like the Beatles. And, you know, we've all seen those photos. You know, people start to follow trends, and um, so you know, something's working. People like to be successful. Sylvia Roan, who was the uh, CEO, I'm not supposed to talk about her, but you know what? Fuck her. Um, <laughs> she took me in a meeting and she said, you know, if you would just cut your hair off like Metallica, we could make you more alternative, Nikki. That was the beginning of a lo very long lawsuit. <laughs> but the fact is that that person actually thought that. And, and you know, I just don't think that's the proper way to, to do photography, it's a proper way to do radio, it's a proper way to conduct yourself in life, is to just follow. You know, so whether you're at a disadvantage or at an advantage, I think that you just have to kind of dig in and, and find out what's working best for you and stick to your guns. You mentioned Steven Tyler, and I remember years yeah. ago, you, you know, in your book, you, you described how you finally checked your answering machine back when we had those. It voicemail, does? old school voicemail, and I and missed the, those. And there was Stevens just saying, "You know, are you okay, man?" Yeah, yeah. It, um, what do you think of his 
of his role and, uh, and, and his performance so far on Idol? I think that American Idol um, needed Steven Tyler, and we have an opportunity. Listen, this is a guy who can write songs, design sets, knows fashion, one of the world's greatest singers, performers. Who better to help find the next person that I just got done talking about than Steven Tyler? It's amazing. I mean, he's, he, he really knows. I mean, if anybody knows. It, it's been said that to come back from the depths that you faced and that a lot of people probably in this room have faced, and you have to have a higher power. Are there many higher powers, or what is the higher power for you on a day-to-day -day basis? What keeps you on the ground, out of trouble? I mean, you have to stay humble. Humility is everything. That's what I've learned in my, my time. Um, and to be humble, you have to realize that someone's bigger than yourself. When you're a rock star, it's really hard for someone to put you in your place. <laughs> my kids kick my ass. <laughs> they, you know, my dear friends kick my ass. And I try to stay as humble as I can, as often as I can. And sometimes, you know, I gotta check myself because I start to get a little, you know, a little wordy, a little luxury. And um, in the end, I have to give it away. I have to give away what I'm learning and I have to give it up to somebody that's actually running, you know, running the show. And that to me is comforting. That to me is comforting when I can just kind of go, let God take over. And I'm not like a Jesus guy. I should make fun of Jesus so much on my radio show that I get hate mail. I just think he's funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, he was the first rock star. He had chicks, wine, <laughs> good hair, <laughs> naked, <laughs> and I'm going to hell. <laughs> you mentioned your kids. Let's, let, let's dig in just a second. The age range of, of, the, of your kids? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. This, I always hate this. Why? Like, you know, people go, how, how old are your kids? And I, and, and I start, you know, 10, and then um, 14, everybody nods, and they go, or, or 15 now, sorry, um, 16 and then 20. And they're like, that's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> but you're only 32. I yeah. know. <laughs> what's, what's the toughest thing about being a dad? The toughest thing? Yeah. Letting go. How? Just letting go. Yeah. It's the same thing with music, with everything. It's just like, that to me is my big life lesson. Um, letting go. Whenever I think I'm in control, oh man, it gets bad. <laughs> just gotta let go and just kind of follow your heart, follow your, you know, p things work out. People work themselves out. Situations work themselves out. When they're not supposed to work themselves out, they don't work themselves out anymore, you know? Everything comes to an end. George Harrison, uh, and I think you probably relate to this, he got into Hinduism in the 60s, became a vegetarian and yeah. so on, but the, the key message that I learned from him and, 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 and thought you would kind of think it was cool is that everything happens when it should. You can't rush stuff. I mean, you, you have projects that you want to do, but they come when they're supposed to come. Yep. We're so glad that these projects have come now in your life. The yep. book, the record, we wish you all the luck in the world. We think we know that you're going to tour with the crew again. We if are. You, if you do, great. Yeah. We're definitely touring. What? what? <laughs> are they coming to Canada? Is that something that's even been discussed? <laughs> We have one show booked in Canada, and um, we've seen, jeez. <laughs> um, we are, uh, have heard people complain, and we've uh, seen if there's any time left on the calendar, because they, the tour ends at a certain time, and then another tour starts. We're going to Australia, and there's other commitments, so we're trying to see. So don't, don't hold me to it, but I'm trying. Oh, great. This is going to hurt. The book, the movie, they're coming soon. I know you know all about them, and I know you'll want to get them. And uh, let's buy music. Let's support Nikki Six. Let's, uh, let's thank him for being here. Thank you. Thanks. Explore Music wears English Laundry Apparel.